You see it coming off? If this was fire blight, I would not be able to do this because the actual tissue of the plant underneath would also be infected and black. So this is just sooty mold coming off the tree, which is a complete blessing for me. Because for a few weeks there, I thought I had lost all my European pears. Hello, beautiful subscribers. It's March 28th here, Southeastern Pennsylvania, zone 7A. And today we're gonna be talking about what could be a big problem for my European pears. When growing fruit in your backyard, you have to diagnose a lot of problems on your own. It's not like we can pick this tree up and take it to the doctor to get answers. So it makes it challenging but that much more rewarding. Today, we're gonna to be looking at a big problem that I have on my European pears. Look at the color of the branches. This is a kefir pear, but all the branches on my pear trees are completely black. And last year, I believe I wrongly diagnosed this problem. Hopefully you subscribers can learn from me. What I thought was a serious case of fire blight looks to be now actually just sooty mold. And with the wrong diagnosis last year came the wrong remedy, which led to the symptoms getting significantly worse. Here's a Bartlett. It's completely black all over the branches. This happened last year in the summer and late into the season. Completely black. Fire blight is a bacterial disease that mostly affects apples and pear trees. And fire blight is caused by the bacteria Erwinia amylivoria, and it is characterized as wilting or black tissue damage, and it'll lead to dieback in the branch and leaf dieback as well. It actually gets inside the tissue, and if you get fire blight too bad, you will have to cut the tree down. You're supposed to cut it back six inches below the fire blight and then dispose of the branch off site so we don't spread it around. But as you can see, the entire tree is black. So I originally thought, oh my goodness, all my European pears are destroyed. You will get small pop-ups of fire blight on your apples and pear trees and Generally, it looks something like that. And you just cut six inches below, dispose of off-site. So, it will happen. The shoots and the tips will die back. The leaves will wilt. But generally, it's more localized. You remove the branch and the battle goes on the next year. Usually, your entire tree doesn't turn black. Here's another one of my older European pears. You can see it's budding. So I originally thought it was fire blight last year, so throughout the summer, I was trying to spray copper, which will help control it, and I was trying to spray chlorothalonol. But chlorothalonol is for fungal diseases, and fire blight is actually a bacterial disease. So chlorothalonol and copper fungicide both handles fungal diseases. And there's a huge list of fungal diseases, if this label wasn't destroyed, that they both cover, but it's not fire blight. So if you do have a tree that is covered in fire blight and you don't want to cut it down, 
you should try and spray streptomycin sulfate instead. Fertilone makes a product. Now I wouldn't spray this unless you know you have fire blight in your apples and pears, but it's streptomycin sulfate. And you'll see the active ingredient down here in the quarter. And this is last desperation if you can't control the fire blight through pruning techniques. Streptomycin sulfate is a bactericidal antibiotic. It will actually kill the bacteria on the tree instead of just inhibiting the growth. They want you to spray it once a week for a four week period while your apples or pears or whatever else you have has fire blight is blooming. Like I said before, I wouldn't spray it unless you have some crazy case of fire blight and you don't want to cut a bunch of branches off the tree and this is like a last ditch effort. So going through this whole process, I learned a lot about fire blight and I learned a lot about different fungicides and disease control that you can use. And in that process, I realized that I don't actually have fire blight. What I believe I have is sooty mold, which is just great for me because it's significantly less damaging. Now, there might be some fire blight on these European pears, but it's not what would be causing the entire tree to turn black. I was spraying the copper, it wasn't working. I was spraying the chlorothalonol, it wasn't working. Then I was spraying the streptomycin sulfate, it wasn't working. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get the trees to stop turning black. And that's because it's not fire blight, it's sooty mold. And sooty mold is caused by an insect. And this is a good thing. Sooty mold is much easier to treat and it doesn't actually affect the tissue inside the tree and won't kill the tree. Sooty mold is a byproduct from an insect feeding on the underneath of the leaves. So in the summer, I either had aphids or mites or scale on these trees. And as they fed, they secrete honeydew. That honeydew is sticky, sugary substance. And the sooty mold grows on the honeydew. Really, I needed to be treating it with an insecticide. I needed to come down here, I needed to kill the insects that are causing the sooty mold that was growing on their secretion on the honeydew. So by killing the insects, I stopped the honeydew secretion, which is what the sooty mold grows on. You can use horticultural oil or pimethrin both are organic insecticides. I even think like insecticidal soap will work to suffocate the sap sucking insects. You gotta time it well, that's the problem. I gotta come out here more often and keep a close eye on the trees and it might take more than one application, but it's much easier to control than if you actually had the bacterial disease fire blight. Sooty mold fungi doesn't actually harm the tree. You can simply get a brush or soap and wash it off the tree. This is also a way to be able to tell if you have sooty mold or fire blight. If you can easily wash it off, then it's sooty mold. If it's blackened on the inside, the tissue on the inside is also turned black, then you're gonna be looking at fire blight. So, if you can easily rub it off, it's sooty mold. So, it won't hurt the tree, but if you don't like the way it looks, you can come out here and rub it off with a brush. 
soapy water. The underlying problem was the insects. And that's why my symptoms kept getting worse and worse. The aphids, the mealybugs, the scale were all continuing to feed and the sooty mold continued to have a place for the fungi spores to expand and expand and soon the entire tree was covered in it. All right, I hope we all learned something today. I know I did. I'll be coming back in a few weeks and we'll be showing the honeydew secretion because I'm sure the insects will be back. And I'll show you what that looks like. Sappy, sugary substance, real sticky. But for now, hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.